Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the channel. Welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Discovery Optics ED PRS 5 to 25 by 56 first focal plane scope. Now this is a PRS scope, note the large turrets on it. And full disclosure, Discovery Optics had contacted me and they sent this over and were kind enough to say, hey, you know, we like your channel, we'll send you a scope over, do a review on it. And specifically they wanted to see some comparison between some other scopes. So I've got some of my favorite brand scopes, which of course are Element Optics. We're gonna take a look at this with a scope cam versus some of those Element Optics scopes. I've got a Helix and a Titan. And then I also have a primary arm scope, which is lower budget than this. And we'll take a look through that too. And I'll try to keep my opinion out of it and just let you see with your own eyes, the clarity through each of the scopes. We'll also do a little bit of shooting and then I'll move the turret and see if it tracks back to where it was set. And I also want to take a look at the eye relief on the various scopes and kind of see where the eye relief is on this at full power because people are always asking about that. So first, I think we'll take a look at what's in the package. Very important, let's take a look at what you get in the packaging. So the packaging itself is kind of this glossy cardboard, very nice presentation. I think that's important. So we'll take the lid off here. And what you get is number one, you're gonna get a quality control checklist and they do quite a few parameters for quality control. So that's, that's encouraging, good to see. We've got the details for the scope. Now this is a PRS scope. It is in MRAD. The magnification is five to 25 X and the objective lens is 56 millimeter. The scope tube itself is a 34 millimeter. And you can see there, the max elevation adjustment range is 15 MRAD and the max windage is 8.7 MRAD. And you've got some other details in there which are important. So good to have that. Next, you have your instructions. Like I always say, guys, read your instructions. Make sure you know what you're doing with any technical product before you start using it. That way you don't screw it up, return it, up the cost for the manufacturer, and then up the cost for all the consumers down the stream. All right, then you've got a nice little chamois lens cloth in there. Nice that they include that, good. And then we get on to the scope itself. So the first thing I noticed is we have a trio of sunshades and yes you can attach them all together and make a super mega voltron style sunshade i've done it ready to form voltron um, but moving on from there uh, of course you've got the scope itself and we'll take a deeper look at that in a minute um, we do have a throw lever for the magnification adjustment so instead of pinching it with your fingers like this you can use the throw lever on it that will go right into that hole right there. It's thread into there. So that's nice that they include that. They also include uh, a little lens maintainer. This is typical that you see in some, some high-end optics. Uh, you've got the little lens cleaner itself on that end, and then you've got the little brush to get any dust off. So uh, you've got that, you've got an Allen key in here, not sure which that is for, maybe the zero stops. And additionally in the package, it comes with a leveling kit. Now this is just a, like kind of a mechanical or manual leveling kit. I typically use a Wheeler bubble level leveling kit. I'll drop a link for that in the comments as well. But uh, if you don't have that, this is kind of a nice option that they include that. And this is what I'm gonna use today to level the scope. So the leveling kit is actually aluminum. I thought these were gonna be plastic. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that these are aluminum. All right, next. We've got, it does come with rings. So pretty nicely packaged. Okay, you've got your rings. Now these are non-adjustable rings. Uh, they're Picatinny rail rings. You've got an extra screw in case you lose one and then the Allen key. So pretty self-explanatory. And then we've got the scope itself. So going over the scope itself, it does have illumination. So that's this outward wheel right here. And it has six levels of illumination for the reticle. And this, this bigger wheel is your parallax wheel. And very important, it goes down to, let's see here, 25 on this scope. So 25 all the way to infinity. And like I said, it is an MRAD scope and it does have zero stops. We'll take a deeper look at that in a bit. Uh, but that's basically what you get in the package. Okay, so we got that scope mounted up using the leveling kit that they provided. And what's nice that I didn't mention before about the actual rings is they do have your torque values written on them. So you'll never forget what to torque those to. And I usually use a Wheeler scope torque wrench. I'll put a link to that in the comments. But 
Anyway, this thing's mounted up, so I'm gonna get it sighted in and then we'll take a look down the scope with it. One other important feature that I didn't really discuss is that the elevation turret has a zero stop. So I am gonna grab my tripod, put this phone on a tripod, and I'll show you how that is used. They made the retention screw on this very easy to access with basically anything you have on hand. So a coin would work great. In my case, I have a key right here. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off. And once that's off, you can pull the turret. And this piece right here is your zero stop. And it's got three Allen grub screws on it. And basically what you wanna do is once you have your zero, you wanna set that so that you cannot dial down any further. So see this tab that's sticking out on it? Let's get a better shot of that. This tab right here, you would wanna make, you would wanna loosen these grub screws and turn this so that it stops right here so that you wouldn't be able to dial down any further. You could only dial up. So that's how you're gonna stop at your zero and you can see that's a little bit elevated there. So very simple, just like the element turrets, which you've seen a lot, this pretty much the same style mechanism there, but just take one, two, three grub screws, loose them up a bit, dial this tab close to, I like to leave it a little bit off so that I can go a little bit past my zero downward if I have to. And then that's how you can have an easy reference to where your zero is. The windage turret is resettable. However, it's a little more complicated than just the flathead screw that the elevation turret has. On this, you can just take it off with a coin or a key or whatever, and then reset your turret. On this one, you're gonna have to take an Allen key and undo some of these grub screws, and then you can reset that turret. All right, so before we do some scope cam footage, here are what I have to compare. So on the Air Force Talon there is the primary arms, four to 14 first focal plane scope. That one retails for around 300. I got it for around 200 on sale. Uh, then we have, of course, the Element Helix. That is a 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane on the Panthera there. Um, that one runs about 480 retail. And then, of course, we have the Element Titan. So that is going to match the kind of more of the specs of the Discovery Scope because it does have the same 5 to 25 magnification range. It also has the 56 millimeter objective. It's a 34 millimeter tube and it's got illumination. So uh, as far as functionality goes, that one is going to be probably the best comparison, but I will go ahead and clean up all of these lenses and then we'll take a look at some scope cam footage. And what I'm going to do is way out there, the furthest fence rung, I don't know if you can see it, that's 120 yards. We'll set our parallax on each scope to that, and then we'll go through the zoom range on each one and you can sort of see the, the clarity for that. Um, keep in mind, I am filming with a cell phone. So it is not a high definition camera or anything, but the Samsung S10 camera on this is actually really good. I film like all my videos with it. So I don't think we should have a problem there. So let's go ahead and take a look through each of these scopes. All right, so I am sitting behind the primary arms four to 14 first focal plane scope. All right, so right there, that is lowest power, four X. And as I go through the range, I'll tell you when it stops. All right. So that is full power 14X on the primary arm scope. And just note the clarity. I'll see if I can edit this up and put all of the scope footage next to each other so you can see what they all look like. So that's the primary arms. Next we'll do the Element Helix. Okay, here we have the Element Helix 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane scope. Now this is at the lowest setting, which of course is six, and we'll go ahead and zoom in just like we did with the last scope to that 120 yard fence post, and you guys can get a get your own opinion for the clarity here. All right, that's fully zoomed. I'm trying to hold it still here for you guys. And again, that is 120 yards full power on the Element Helix. All right, next we'll move up to the Titan. Okay, so here's the Element Titan 5 to 25. And it is a day later than when I filmed the other scopes. It's a little bit more overcast, so take that into consideration. Also, the reason I did this is because this scope sometimes doesn't play very nice with the side shot for some reason. 
and I'm doing my best I have it looking a lot better than it did yesterday so we're gonna go ahead and zoom in that was at five power and this is not attached to a rifle so I apologize for the bobbling around here but we'll get it out to the all right so that is to the max power so that's 25 and that's how it looks at 120 yards all right so here is the discovery which seems to want to play pretty nice with the side shot scope cam and let's go ahead and zoom into our so this is that's five power let's go ahead and zoom in all right so there is the 120 yard fence now this is a cell phone side shot mount and it is hastily mounted so it is not perfect but you can go ahead and compare that with the other three scopes we'll go ahead and put those up on the screen and there you get a feel for kind of what your field of view is and mostly how it looks now of course it's going to look different to your human eye versus my hastily mounted side shot which is kind of screwing up the sides a little bit but let's go ahead and do this we'll we'll look at some various distance stuff so i'm going to go back down to 25 yards and i'll go to like 10 magnification okay and we can look around and sort of see the clarity on that scope so that's about 20 yards and i have it at 20 at the 25 parallax setting which i think is actually 25 meters because it's an MRAD scope so it would make sense that things are in metric so that's like that's like 20 yards or I don't know 18 ish meters maybe and I'll zoom in there all right and let's look a little let's look at like what truly might be 25 meters so we've got the wood pile there. I'll back off. So that was in the 20 power range. I'll back off to 10. And we that's the that's the log pile that I always shoot chipmunks out of. And we've got the little bridge. Little bridge right there. So this scope does want to play nice with the side shot, which is good. Sometimes with various different scopes, it's hard to get it to play nice. But anyway, that gives you an idea of it. Next, I'm going to put a target out at 50 yards, zero this thing, and then I will shoot it, and then I will adjust the turret and see if it comes back down to where I had it set at. I have a target out there at 50 yards. I'm going to be shooting from the bench. Fire. Timer. Off. Let's go ahead and verify my zero. Okay, I'd say we have a good enough zero. All right, let's take one more just to verify. Now these are unsorted pellets. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right, so that's at 50 yards. I'm gonna remember where I'm set at and we're going to do a tracking test. So I'm winding her a lot. All right, I think I was right there. Let's see if it tracked right back to where it was. And it did. Okay, so I would say that the tracking is very accurate. Okay, so for the eye relief on this scope, guys, it says in the little card, the info card that comes with it, 85 to 87 millimeters, and that is right a little under three and a half inches. And I find that to be true. So this is where I have my eye relief on this scope. You can see my eye is about 3.25 to 3.4 inches away from the lens there. So that's what your eye relief on this scope is gonna be true to the manual. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it pretty much for me. I think I went over most of the features. So just to recap, 
The scope is a five to 25 power. It's got a 56 millimeter objective lens. It is a 34 millimeter tube. It comes with a scope leveler. It comes with scope mounts. It comes with a chamois cloth. It comes with uh, three different sunshades. It comes with a cleaning kit. Quite a bit of stuff you get with this for the price. Plus it has a zero resettable turret and it's in emerald. It has a pretty big parallax wheel that you don't have to add an additional wheel or anything on. It's already pretty big and it is an illuminated reticle scope. So for the price, you get quite a bit for this. And I tried to keep most of my opinion out of it uh, other than what I just told you. And you can kind of look through the scopes that I, I had on my scope cam setup and sort of make up your own mind on it. But uh, just thanks to Discovery for sending this out for review. It's going to find a good home on my brother-in-law's gun here. And uh, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.